Are you sure you're live? Mm -hmm. It records from now on, so it records the whole oh, okay. thing. Yeah. Oh, sounds like you got somebody in the group already. Ooh. I'm back to them too, eh? There we go. Boys, I got uh, the old MacBook working finally. I was going to say go down to Straight Pipe Acres and uh, sub, but uh, I think we're all sub to Straight Pipe Acres. <laughs> Ryan, are you still are you still short four? Are you still short four subs? <laughs> All right. This is better than the last one I had last night. All right, well. I wanted to do a, a live stream today because not only because I want to drink this filthy Wayne Gretzky beer. If you ever tried it, I don't know about it. It's kind of, it's a little bit nasty. I think he should stick to hockey. <laughs> I don't know about this. Can you guys hear me? Can, can anyone hear me? I'm using my new MacBook, so I don't know if it works. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, I just set it up. Uh, it wasn't allowing me to... Okay, I see. Oh, I got buttons here. Ah, okay, perfect. I can. I can. I'm confused. I'm like a bird seeing something shiny. <laughs> oh, talk louder. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that a little better? Perfect. Perfect. First off, if you're not subscribed to Straight Pipe Acres, go get him to 6,000. He's like a couple short. You guys probably all are already, though. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> so I woke up this morning. And I was driving my little guy to school, and I woke up to um, five calves all born in the same end of the barn. So I locked them in last night because it was so cold. So I opened the door, and I took a look, and there was a calf right under my feet. I looked to the right, and if you guys remember that girl from the video um, <laughs> that tried to kill me, she tried to thump me on film. It was that same, same cow. So she came right at me. She kicked me in the leg first off. Didn't have my camera on for this, but I <laughs> scampered out of there. And she was guarding the door. So I went and looked under the door, and I could see there was like five calves on top of each other, brand new steaming calves. So I had to drive my kid to school. So I motored. <laughs> I drove him to school, and I got back. And then there's this calf. He was sitting there with his neck back. He's hypothermic, so I had to bring him in. I warmed him up. Anyways, this is where the story gets good. I look in the middle of the barn, and there's one huge calf sitting there. Nobody claimed him. Hey, everyone. Holy, 21 people already. That's fantastic. Anyways, um, anyways, I have this one calf, and this is what I want to ask you guys. Anyone with cattle or livestock, how do you solve this? I paired up all the groups. I took the calf sled, I pulled two calves into the little barn in the shed, I locked them in, but now I have one unclaimed cow, and, or one unclaimed calf, so I had to go get colostrum for it. <clears throat> I got him colostrum, I got him up, and now no one will claim him. We have no idea who the mother is, so I'm going to have to go back out there with colostrum in a little while, I have to double check because we have too many calves there, no one's tagged. <laughs> Hey, BCP. 
the cattle, the cattle barn, the cattle baron. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, like this morning was a cluster. I have it on video. I don't even know how I'd, I would do the video. We ended up, what happened is that mean cow with the little calf, I dragged into the house. Luckily, April was at home. I had to hair dry or dry it off, warm it up because I don't have my calf warmer, which I was talking about making forever. But exactly, Ed Goslin, <clears throat> exactly. That's what I was getting at. You know, we couldn't find the nether mother. There was no other cow there. So a few hours ago, I locked it up with one that I thought calved that didn't claim a calf. And we're looking at her and we're like, she didn't drop low. So, <laughs> no, the stork just dropped me at my parents' doorstep. I was raised by wolves before that. <laughs> uh, yeah, calves in the barn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's crazy, though. Anyways, I I talked to Dad. I said, I, you know what? I think this one might be the mother. So we locked her in. And I just went out and checked. Here she's in labor. So that cow didn't even calf. She was a smaller girl. So I pulled the calf out and uh, I, I got it walking. And then uh, basically the calf gets up and a mom from the back of the barn that had a calf comes running up, starts licking the side of his face. <laughs> so the calf stumbles over. This is where it gets weird. The cow, she's about a four-year-old cow. And she's not that big. And she gave birth. We knew she had one confirmed calf, but she's not flat at all. Like she looks like she had gave birth to a small 70 pound calf, but she already has an 80 pound calf. And this other calf is 85 pounds. So do you guys have any tricks? Like there's lots of cow guys on here. Now I can see, do you guys have any tricks? Like what would you do to find this? I only have probably, if I don't get it figured out by tomorrow at lunch, it's I'm gonna have to be it'll be ball reared if nothing claimed it. I, I doubt anything claimed it. So I don't really know what to do. Even my dad doesn't know what to do. So <laughs> pulling my hair out, I don't know what to uh what direction to take here. Well, yeah, yeah, like right, Ryan. Yeah, like if <laughs> if somebody would pick the calf, there's the one, the one that picked the calf already had a big calf, so I just can't see it being. Maybe she had twins. I, I just can't see a girl having two huge twins like that. Like she would be so flat in the stomach. This she this cow was like she was like filled out. She wasn't. It looks like she dropped a little calf. I don't know what to uh, what to think here. But uh, yeah, like I don't deal with twins. Uh, I haven't really had a twin for years, so I don't really know. You know, like. <laughs> I'm confused here. Honestly, I, I just don't want a bottle calf, not a big one like that. Hey, Grumpy, maybe I'll ship it. Uh, <laughs> rather than shipping you a box of steaks, maybe I'll just ship you that calf. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Ryan? I, <laughs> I've i been playing this through my head, and I'm like, you know what? If she's going to take the calf, <laughs> I'm honestly thinking of, of pinning her up with them and seeing if she'll accept both of them. Uh, she'll accept she accepts the one but it's the the big one that you know <clears throat> but you know that would be a fresh steak just throw that uh that 90 pounder on the barbie <laughs> yeah lots of milk she's a young girl she's productive like she's a she's a piggy she's always the first at the feeder so she's always the one overeating but uh veal cutlets that's an option right you wouldn't have to age that meat at all. It'd be tender as can be. <laughs> when you guys uh, see the video next weekend, you'll see what I mean. Like it just, she doesn't look like the type that had a twin. Um, and then that the crazy mother was going nuts. She tried to kill me, so I couldn't even go into the barn. So we pinned her up, and she lost her lost her shit on me. <clears throat> so what happened is. Uh, dad had the idea that we should lasso her, the crazy one, and uh, <laughs> and milk her a little bit because she had lots of milk. So we ended up doing just that, and I'm holding the rope um, <laughs> around a pole, 
<laughs> and this old, she's an older Simitol. She likes dad. She hates me. She's the same one that goes at me every year. Knock the pitchfork out of my hand. She's nuts. But uh, I was holding the rope and dad last suit her. It was, it, sound, it was that fun, as fun as it sounds. But I was holding her. So we put the one calf on her and sucking. And then he's like, oh, maybe we should give this other one some fresh milk to help. And we tried that. And then, then things went really, really wrong. That's when she flipped out. And we had to take the rope off. And I had to scurry out of there. So uh, I don't know. We might have to shoo her into the handling system. Um, and tell the little one sucking better. She's a good mom, though. It, it, we just didn't, everything's so messed up. Because this nobody claimed this calf, everyone was confused. There was five calves, literally. It's a big barn. It's like, it's huge. But they all dropped in the same area, or they dropped and the calves stumbled into the same area. And it really caused a lot of problems. Yeah, exactly. Two big calves, that's my concern, too. Like, if that mother that kind of likes her, likes both those calves if one was a smaller calf i'd be good with but these are both like pretty big calves i i wish i could show you them right now but i'll show you them this weekend but they're both <laughs> the one i was dragging around had to be 85 pounds at least so well yeah exactly ryan that's what we're trying to well i picked one out that didn't look we picked a younger girl. She wasn't in as good a condition as the rest. She's a quiet girl, doesn't eat the good hay. She just kind of gets pushed around by the others. And I thought she might have calfed. And we put her in there, and then she, well, she's starting calfing. I got to go check after the live show or after this live stream. I got to go check her. I'm sure she has another calf. And then as I was leaving, we had a sixth calf drop in the shed, so I locked her in there already so it's just it's so dumb it's just everything at once i wish uh it's not the matter that there was five or six calves it's the matter that they were all on top of each other and it was chaotic i was just hoping like i'm glad i didn't lose a calf because <laughs> the shit was getting real <laughs> i'm glad i did i only got i got kicked i got kicked in the leg by that that cow got me finally she uh she hammered me right below the knee I got, my wife was like, what happened? I'm like, oh, I just got beat up by that same girl that hunts me every calving season. It's horrible. I seriously, that that cow's going to give me nightmares. I, I, If dad didn't like her, she'd be gone already. Uh, <laughs> she's a nightmare. Mm. They say the more of this you drink, the better it tastes, but I don't know about that. Oof, it's kind of nasty. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't in the uh, family jewels. No, I'd be talking uh, high pitched. <laughs> Anyways, the weather here, the weather's cold again. Um, I was waiting for it to warm up. It sounds like the Saskatchewan guys getting a little bit warmer, and Alberta guys, but uh, we're still gonna be minus. I think we're at minus twenty five right now. It's really windy, so I don't know. I, I don't want to lock them up because they need some room now because we have to tag and and match up and, and boot some out tomorrow. But we just don't have any more room in the calving, uh, calving areas. So, yeah, it sucks. And then I think I have a heifer in labor, and uh, she's, like, one of our biggest girls. She's short, though. She's fairly wide behind. Um, I don't know. I, I hope I'm not – I hope I don't have another long nighter. Ryan, did you get to your uh, straight pipes? You hit uh, your six triple zero yet? Are you there? <clears throat> I recognize most of these names, and I, th I think everyone is subscribed to you already. Ruth, it was a cluster. It was, you know what? It, like I was saying, it's not the matter, like, We've had five, six calves in a day, but it's just like they were all on top of each other. I hope I have them organized, split up right. But like, yeah, there is like Ryan was saying, there's one that's there's one that's out of place. I, I think somebody had a twin. I just can't see. I I honestly think that wicked cow, that mean cow, took the little one. The little one, she wanted that one. That one calf. I think that little calf 
should be paired up with this other one I was talking about, but that's not how it worked out. So the mother claimed the other one because that mean cow probably just took it. So, <laughs> so I think we're all me messed up. I just hope I don't go out there tomorrow and there's two rejected calves because now I got real problems. I don't have anything to graft onto. We have lots of colostrum that we we milked out last year, but we don't have anyone to graft onto. So that's that's another problem. I, I just don't want bottle calves. You know, I already have lambs starting up, so I'm sure I'll be feeding some lambs. <laughs> I don't want to feed calves and lambs. <clears throat> good job. Good job. Yeah, you subscribe to that guy. He's got a good hell of a good channel. There you go. Straight pipes. Go check your phone. Curious. I hope you hit that in the next few minutes here. 18 plus 18. Where are you, Rodney? That's pretty slick. That's okay. Yeah, like it's it's supposed to be warming up here. We're supposed to be able to uh <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not subscribed to straight pipe. I'm so <laughs> grumpy. Andy, you're going to go back to YouTube jail like all your comments. <laughs> so every time, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know why your comments get kicked to the, the YouTube jail. That's pretty funny, though. They're out to get you. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like grumpy farmer. <laughs> That's right, Rock Poplar. Let's let's do some bitching. <laughs> Whiskey and sunshine. <clears throat> You're cold. Yeah, that's yeah. You know what? That's kind of like what we're supposed to be at too. It's supposed to be warmer, getting warm. It's supposed to be plus nine by the by next week. I don't know if that's gonna happen though. It's uh hey Valley View, what's it like out your way right now? You're in uh southern Manitoba. So you'd be closer to that uh, North Dakota border. Bet someone had a twin. Let one of his cow. Yeah, yeah, you're you're probably right there, Valley View. You know what? I think I think we had a twin, <clears throat> and I didn't pick up on it. If I would have been out doing my normal, if I didn't, I'm not using this as an excuse, but if I wasn't driving my little guy to school this morning, I probably could have sorted it out. But I came back an hour later and already everything was messed up. <clears throat> you know what, Ryan? That is true. If it's a vigorous calf, they will survive. They'll just run around and steal. As soon as, as soon as, you know, that might be the case. Maybe I'll just have to give him claustrum until he's strong enough and boot him out and he'll find a nice mom that lets him suck. I have seen that before, actually. That's, that's a good thought, especially with the weather getting warmer. Maybe I <laughs> just monitor him and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, bottle rearing a calf isn't fun, especially when you got you know a big chunk of your herd to calf. It's just <laughs> with the calves, it's gonna be just crazy. Oh, Dan, Dan Schwant, sub to straight pipes, good man, right on. <clears throat> You're gonna enjoy the channel. <clears throat> Sixty miles from border, still can pass. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah. So that's about like out here. It's supposed to get to that. That's right. He should. Uh, you know what? He's in better shape than me. There's no reason he couldn't walk the, you know, fifteen miles. <laughs> he's got a he's got a Polaris one twenty. I could just send him to school in his little snowmobile. Teachers would love me. <clears throat> exactly, 400 bucks. Yeah, sell the calf, cut my losses. Yeah, if, I guess that could be an option, right? Rather than, uh, you know, we have colostrum, but then we're going to use milk replacer. How much is that? I, I don't even know what it costs. I haven't had this problem. Honestly, we haven't had a misplaced calf with the cows for years. I, I can't remember when. Uh, we've seen it once in a while with the heifers or the first timers, but not with the cows. That's why it's so, yeah, so can, you know, you got to figure it out. I, <laughs> somehow, guess right. <laughs> Make an educated guess, stick to it. Farming A180, they're holding on, A. Eh? Oh, yeah. Just wait. They're all going to drop at once. You're going to be just run off your feet. That's how it goes. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Can you guys hear me pretty good on this computer? This is the first time I've, uh, I just got this MacBook Air. I wasn't sure how it was going to work for this. It was kind of a nightmare to get going for the live stream, but snow tapping maple trees eh that's awesome how many trees did you tap how many do you have to tap to make i heard you gotta <laughs> you gotta do an awful lot perfect okay so the audio is good i was gonna put my earbuds but that's cool that's perfect i was actually gonna get my iphone uh oh i hear my little our baby girl's up. She always gets up. She doesn't sleep much. <laughs> Perfect. BCP, how are you doing for uh, for weather your way? You're probably much like the other boys there. 80, 80 bucks a bag to replace her? So, yeah, that, that adds up. <laughs> That'll add up. Eighty. I wonder how. I wonder how long an eighty dollar bag would last for, for uh, you know, an eighty, eighty five pound calf. Probably wouldn't last that long. So if we had like what I was thinking is if I had a calf to a cow to graft onto, you could pin them up. You could probably graft it onto a cow. But we just don't have any. I guess that's a good thing. I'm not complaining. That would be crazy. Eight buckets. Okay, cool. So how for eight buckets, like how many trees is that? Like 50, 25, 100? <laughs> I heard it's lots of work. $45 for the sheep milk replacer. Okay, so that's the milk, that's not the, uh, not the colostrum, right? So that's the actual milk replacer. 70 to 80 bucks for 2020. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you know what, Ryan, I should have a, a bag. I normally do too. Um, luckily we have <clears throat> the, the actual colostrum uh, kicking around the real stuff. So everything today, I actually fed three and a half liters, four liters today, uh, which is crazy. I haven't fed any. Like last year I did it twice. I had two hypothermic calves I had to do it with. But <clears throat> what can you do? It's kind of a shitty day so far. I, I bet you I'm going to go out there. It's going to be stupid again. I'm probably going to be working all night. Okay, see you, buddy. Take it easy, eh? Good first time calves. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that, Valley View. That's that's right. That is an option. Bit of grain, yeah. Hmm. Oh, five or six trees for two buckets, eh? Yeah, that's not that bad. I thought it would be way more. I have, you know what? <laughs> uh BP, I have uh, my neighbor's a dairy farmer. I probably could easily do that. I could probably easily go get, I don't know if they'd sell it or how that works, but uh, but that would work. Um, if they're, I don't know if they're legally allowed to do that. <laughs> you know, uh, they're pretty strict about stuff like that. I remember talking to them about buying milk and they were like, no, <laughs> no way. Yeah. You know what, Ed, Ed, you're right. It is. We we did that today. We needed the colostrum, and we're waiting for it to frost. We got hot water, and by that time, I'm like, you know what, I just got to go mix up some. Uh, we have we actually had some colostrum powder, but this, we don't have the milk replacer. I, I might have to just go buy a bag to have on hand. I think that shelf life of that stuff would be good if it's kept in a dry area. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, you know, Valley View, this is a, it's kind of a rare, we don't usually have issues like 
like this. Like we don't have twins, number one, typically. We don't have, with the cows, typically they mother up. We usually don't have issues with that, with the cows. But <laughs> I guess uh, no better time than now to have them. <clears throat> uh oh, Ryan, you sent me a picture. Uh oh, is it? In, I hope it's not a nudie. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Yeah, I'll carry a paint. Get yeah, beeper. <clears throat> Yeah, a northern farmer. He had a bunch of twins too, eh? Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> we don't see twins here, so we weren't really expecting it. Oh, there you go. 6,001. Congrats there, uh, Ryan. Cheers to that. Cheers to 6,001. Sweet. Yeah, I saw... I. Tyson has a bunch of bunch of twins. I'm not. I'm not too. I'm not too keen on looking after them. I don't know much about much about twins at all. But uh, yeah, good work there, Straight Pipes. You got a good channel. Not surprised you hit six thousand already. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, so I was. I was talking to uh, April and my dad about uh, our genetics, about maybe changing up the, the breed of our herd a little bit. And we were talking about whether we should go with a larger framed animal or a smaller framed animal. Because the red Angus are pretty well, a little bit smaller. But we have the Simital, and then actually there's some from back in the day, some limousine in there. And we are talking about uh, maybe we want to go... For smaller animals, is there more profit in smaller animals or bigger animals? What do you guys think in terms of breeds? What do you think would be a good mid-framed, you know, cow that you'd get good marbling meat off of? I know Red Angus is, is, is up there, but has anyone ever thought of doing like a, like a Wagyu or something? That's what I was kind of thinking about. Yeah, everyone looks, you know what, when we sold some some bred heifers a couple years ago, guys were really, really, really looking for the Seminole Angus. They wanted the white faces on them. And uh, <laughs> they came and they saw, they're like, we had a few, but they wanted, we had too many of the red. And uh, the guy said, no, I want some Seminole. I want more Seminole in mine, more money to be made. But I don't know if the numbers, I don't know if that numbers add up for a big, big animal. I'm telling you, some of our cows, they're big. Like I'm talking, we have a few big ones. I always talk about how we don't want huge animals, but 600 pounds. Yeah, absolutely, Ed. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. That's Yeah, I was just going to, you know, at the end of the day, that, that big cow, like we have a couple 16 to... 1800 pounders and they eat like hell and yeah you get a big calf but <laughs> even the calf is eating like crazy so at the end of the day i don't know how much better off you are <clears throat> we love black angus I, I i'm actually looking at black angus bulls a black a black angus and sell to the triple a grade beef guys a eh? You were showing me a red Angus there, Ryan. Would you have a, a, a big black Angus bull? Like a yearling or something? Get your cheese white. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, those cows like, well, right now, because we're selling beef, hey, our website's going to be up and running. <clears throat> our website should be up and running here in a couple weeks. Hopefully. So we'll be selling... Uh, Beef online. 
Got a black one, eh? Ryan, send me a, a, a pic of them when you get a chance. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. And uh, is it – how old is he, Ryan? How old is this black Angus? Go red, eh? <laughs> we got red. We got – you know, you know, Ed. We ha I love the red Angus. Their, their meat is awesome. You know, when you butcher it, I I love the red Angus. Okay, take care there, Twin Brook Acres. Thanks for dropping by. Well, you know what? I was gonna send uh, Grumpy Farmer a couple steaks. I was gonna see if I could send them. I thought he was joking, but he's serious. So I gotta look into that. Hey, they ship they ship beef to the uh, to Canada from the states. I can't see why we wouldn't be able to if you pack it right. But I think there might be a lot of red tape involved with that. I'm not sure. Oh, he's a yearling. Well, he'd be for the uh, most importantly, he'd have to have a small uh, uh, a light birth weight <laughs> because these are the first. He'd go with the first time calvers, so he'd have to be. Not a massive, massive bull. Uh, Rocky Run Angus Ranch. No, no, you don't need to be licensed. You have to have all your your um, your government um, papers in line. You have to have your GST number and PST number and everything. And then you have to have. You can't just butcher an animal and sell it. You have to go to a um, provincially and or federally inspected. Um, uh, butcher processing plant so so you usually pay a pretty dollar uh for that but it's definitely it's definitely worth it it's 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 a safety thing you know if you're at a if you're at a licensed uh insured facility they're probably going to follow the strict criteria to <laughs> to properly butcher the animal if nobody's getting sick <laughs> hey zo how's it going <clears throat> how's the weather out your way Yeah, they, yeah, you're right, Ryan. Yeah, if once you get that provincially inspected or feather, federally inspected uh, uh, butcher, you can then sell to stores or restaurants, whatever it may be, right? So, um, I think they would uh, they would shut you down in a hurry if you didn't do that. Exactly, it's not minus fifty. If you <laughs> that wind felt like it today, I'll tell you that much. I don't want to. I thought I was done locking up my calves, but I got to lock them up again. So, or all the cows. I just don't know where I'm going to, I'm going to have to lock. I'm going to probably have to open up the other half of the barn because we've got too many calves in there crawling over each other. I only have three tagged out of the, I think there's eight in there already. And we booted a bunch out the other day. So it's just getting overrun with little nose lickers. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, Mateo, we do. We uh, we grow our crops. We grow the only crops we really grow. Um, all our hay crops, obviously, we grow. Actually, speaking about that, I have lots to do this this year. I got to put lots of crops in, and I want to clear a bunch of bush from some land we bought. So, it's some good hay land, and it's getting drier and drier here. And hay is harder and harder to come by. It's getting really expensive. You know, for guys that buy their hay. I sell uh, I sell hay to Bison guy, and he buys all his hay, and it's it's getting pretty expensive. So, <laughs> hey Albert, hey cheers, interlake guy, beautiful. <clears throat> oh, is USDA not good? Is it? Isn't that funny? So they all they care about. I understand that. Yeah, okay, you know what? To humanely, I, I get that. That's okay, but they should be more concerned about the operation of the plant and the how clean it is and sanitary, etc. Like <laughs> that's not good. They're focused a little bit on. They got to focus on everything, but you know, yeah, you got to humanely treat the animal, obviously, but you got to process that animal. That's just as important. <laughs> Night there, Ron. 
Take it easy, buddy. Yeah, yeah, BP. This morning that wind was horrid. It, it felt like it was. It felt like it was minus forty again. <laughs> it was horrible. Tractor. We like we like our John Deere's. I like the the older six series. As you, we have a couple of them. Uh, they've been really good. They've been really uh, low maintenance. Good resale if you ever sell them. I, I got to look into getting another tractor uh, in the near future. Something with lower hours. All ours are getting really, really up there with hours. So, yeah. Okay. So clean facilities. They don't. Ins they don't. They don't inspect the meat. That's crazy to me. I, that doesn't even make sense. I, I can't believe that. That's nuts. That's that's the whole purpose of them, <laughs> right? This defeats the whole purpose. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, antibiotic, hormone free, and then yeah, here they're not even checking the the meat. That's crazy. Good night, Dad. Hey, night, buddy. Want to say hi, to everyone, or good night? Here, here, here. Oh. Oh. Hi. Say good night, big man. Good night. <laughs> Little cowboy Hoyt's going to bed. Hey, buddy. <laughs> don't buy New Holland. Yeah. Hey, BP, don't you try to sell me that blue thing. Not even for a smile and a handshake. <clears throat> BSE nightmare i don't even like hearing that word i i still remember dad was what was he telling me he was getting rid of like steers for 200 bucks and it was just crazy like <laughs> horrible horrible I, I i don't even want to think about that hey thanks uh the bogues Yeah, Hoyt. <laughs> I was telling Hoyt, I'm like, oh, Hoyt, you're going to have to start doing chores if you want nice things. And he was like, oh, but I do lots. He's like, I pick up my toys sometimes. And like, that's it's not really chores. That's kind of like something you should, should just do. <laughs> Boys, I got to refill. I can't drink any more of this. Horrible, absolutely horrible. <clears throat> well, Valley View, were you in uh, reed cattle farming during the BSE? Yeah, that's that was a bad time. My dad was, uh, I think that's when he got, he had to go get, uh, he got a job on the side just to make it through that year. I remember that. It's pretty tough, really tough. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> Hoyt likes the farm and uh you know what honestly that's the main reason I keep the sheep around so he can get some hands on with them uh slowly so he gets a little bit comfortable with the livestock that's right Ryan guys should have ramped up their ranches during BSC <laughs> you could man five grand could buy you a big herd <laughs> back then So I'm here to the party late. Oh, that's okay. We have around a, a hundred head of cattle and we are just north of Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're in the interlake, um, interlake region right between Lake Winnipeg, Lake Manitoba. So we're in uh, camping country. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome here. I, I like it. You can drive either way. Uh, 20 minutes to the lake, either way, lots of boating. If you let you're into that stuff, it's awesome. Oh, Valley View, you just took over the farm when BSE hit? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Oh, man. Have I? Yeah. Uh, the Bogues, if you're talking to me. Yeah, I've always... Um, well, I worked... I came back to the ranch seven years ago. I was born and raised here, actually, in this exact house. Um, but... 
I've worked uh, for a little over 15 years uh, off the farm. And I came back when my dad was thinking of slowing down and retiring. So I came back here and uh, my wife wanted to come get out of the city. And it, it was really worked out well. It worked out awesome, actually. Okay, man. Congrats, Ryan. You go check those girls. Let me know if something crazy ha crazy is happening. <laughs> Make me feel better about my day. <laughs> I'll be right back. He's yeah. grabbing a beer. <clears throat> so I wanted to... um. I want to touch base on for April and I are putting our cut sheets in for because our website's going to be up and running in a couple weeks. So we're putting our cut sheets into the butcher. So we got to figure out what steaks we want to want to sell. And I was doing some research. Obviously, there's ribeyes, right? New York strips. Ground meat's always popular, but we're kind of like pondering what other steaks. What's like apparently T bones. People don't like T-bones that much. I like them, but apparently other people don't. So I don't know how to cut this, how to put the cut sheet in, because this animal's going to be cut in a couple days. It's been hanging already, so. Hmm. But the the to be honest, the the beef sales, the direct beef sales, is uh, it's a it's a hustle sirloin, eh? Uh, you're about the third person that told me that sirloin steaks. We're thinking like tenderloin, sirloin. Um, there's ribeye. What else is there? Rib. We really like the rib steak. I was thinking like the tomahawk, the big tomahawk steak with the big like <laughs> the bone hanging off it. But I don't know. Some people say, hey, that tomahawk's a rip off. You're just paying for that big gross bone on it. T-shirt, what, Manitoba Beef Farmer, what's it supposed to be tomorrow? Was my my app lying to me? I just checked. I didn't think it was supposed to be that nice. I thought night was, but night tomorrow night's going to get cold again, I think, here. Isn't that what they said? They said the weather was kind of like warming up overnight and then getting cool then again tomorrow night. It's crazy. These highs and lows, I, with these highs and lows, I'm really surprised our calves, I haven't had a single sick calf this year, uh, which is good. Ribeye. Absolutely, farmer in Saskatchewan. Ribeye was by far, yeah, by far one of my favorite. Flaming y'all, yeah. Yeah, eh? Mark those down. But the next thing is, is to, um, is to figure out, we got to figure out the pricing on all this freaking meat now. So it's a nightmare. It's selling meats, not easy. <laughs> It's easier to take them to auction. <laughs> That's why we're still using the auction. So we use auction and we, we sell direct too, though. Bone-in ribeye. Yeah, that's what I was... Th I think that's just like the rib steak. Yeah, those are pretty awesome. Really. But uh, I got to pick up... I have my enclosed trailer I got to pick up this week. And we're putting deckling on it with our website and everything. So got to put out some money. But <laughs> it's startup, right? It's a write-off. Takes a little away from my... I was going to upgrade. I want to upgrade a tractor soon, but I got too many I got too many things I got to upgrade. I got to upgrade a barn too. Our pole barn is, as you guys, you guys have seen it, you guys and girls, it's, it's horrible. We need to replace the one on the, the cow side. And I don't know if I want to go with a fabric quonset. I don't know if I want to go with 10. I don't know if I'm going to go with wood. Uh, wood... <laughs> Building materials are so high priced right now that I'm scared to even price one out. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian, I bet you the weather's a lot different out in Vancouver right now. I bet you it's pretty nice. <laughs> Will do. Will do, Zo. Cheers.
Yeah, that's like <clears throat> that's what my butcher said, Rocky Run Angus. Um, he said the bone in you're gonna have a more tender experience, but uh, I don't know if that's the. I don't know. Some people think I've also been told that some people are like, I don't want to pay for the bone. Like guys want to pay for the meat. So I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's. Oh, BCP. Hey guys, guys and girls go down to BCP farming and trucking. Go uh, give him. He needs 10 more subs and he's at his 500. Go, uh, go give him a uh, man. He's close. 10 subs. We, there's 10 of us on here. You got there's gotta be 10 of you not subscribed. Go down there, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. He's got a hell of a good channel. If you haven't seen him, he's uh it's fun to watch him and his wife, CP. I love it. <laughs> how is uh, how is CP uh BP? Is she doing good? She had that laser surgery. Bottoms up, that's right. A couple of these. I earned these today. <laughs> actually my day's not over i have to go out and i gotta do my checks again i gotta make sure all the calves are in the barn i gotta make sure that one calf is okay well there's twins i think there's twins on a mother i don't know i gotta figure that out by morning and then uh i gotta lock the heifers in the front because they like to go out in the snow and drop calves and it's really windy they have no wind block when they're outside so i'm gonna get them into the barns and uh Oh no, she's watching my big mug on your big screen. Holy. <laughs> Allow me to do my makeup. <laughs> I'd show you guys that kick mark I got, but uh, I don't feel like bending over. That, uh, I don't know if you heard BP, but that big cow got me finally right in the leg. She got me. It wasn't on video, but she got me good. <laughs> she, she chased me right out of the barn, the same one from last year. Yeah, she got me good. Holy, unbelievable! I honestly, I might, I might just load up the trailer and take her in as a call when Dad's not around one day because he loves that cow and she's just so nasty. Oh, I, I dread working with her tomorrow. It's like I'm on pens and needles. <laughs> it's so crazy. Hey, later, Murphy. You take it easy. You lucky bugger in Australia. Probably sun tanning right now. Ground her up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the only thing, Albert, is she's a good provider. She's a good mother. You can't, like, she's protecting her calf. Before that calf, she's really nice. You can walk by her, pet her. And that's why she always catches me off guard. But she always has her calf, like, in a corner, and I can't get to it. Today, I had to grab grab the calf, pull it out before she killed me. And I had to bring it in the house and warm it up because she had it right at the front of the barn because there's so many at the back of the barn on top of each other. So what a nightmare. I Tomorrow's going to be a, a rough day, I think, tomorrow. Especially, I know there's, there's another one just dropped. And, you know, when it rains, it pours. So exactly, exactly, like... Like it, 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 she's, uh, I'd consider her stupid protective, like overly, like there's protective. She knows I'm not going to hurt her calf. Like we've been through it every year, the same process, but <laughs> she forgets. She, she hates me. It, it, bottom line, you know, bottom line, she hates me. So uh, today when I tried to get that calf out, I went in there. She wasn't going to have it. She came at me. She, she aggressively came at me. I backed out. So dad pulled into the yard. He's like, here, I'll show you what, what you do. I'm like, I know what to do. Like it's, <laughs> but grab the pitchfork and he's like, hey. And the cow backed up, respects him. It respects him, that cow. It backed up. He backed her up halfway up the barn without no head butts or anything. Backed her up. She stood there. I grabbed the calf, ran out. No problem. It's just crazy. It's just some, I guess that my dad actually, I guess, when she was a heifer, I guess he raised her and she remembers him and respects him and whatever, but she does not like me. Whew. Yeah, I'm right, Brian. Cheers. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Valley View, it's it's crazy, eh? Like, yeah. She probably steals a neighbor's calf. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. They know the system. They know how it works. It's uh, they're almost too smart. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe they're smarter than me. <laughs> So you know what you said it it's that that's why she's still at the farm because she doesn't you know walk away from the calf she'll fight you know if there was a pack of coyotes I'm pretty sure she'd try to kill him or she would die trying to protect that calf so I, I, we're gonna keep her around but <laughs> I just have to stay away from her I just wish she last year she happened to have an issue she didn't have the issue the calf did it was cold out and it was laying by the feeder. I checked it over. It was okay. But then I went to tag it, like in the video, and she just lost her, her mind on me. Just, she was just going to thrash me. Yeah, those, and you know what? I joke about it, but those cows are dangerous at calving time. Honestly, you get an, a mad 1,800-pound cow, they can run fast. They are powerful, and they can hurt you. They can they can kill you easily. <laughs> Brad Heifers from Heartland. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just it's it's a nightmare. I was hoping it was warmer out because I would just let her calve outside, and then what I try to do is get the calf when it's in the creep area when it's like out of sight. I'll run in there. If it needs to be wrong or t tagged, whatever it may be. And then that's usually how you do it, just out of her sight. But uh, last year, the calf bawled when I put the RFID in his ear. And she just lost her shit on me. It was crazy. <laughs> Those were... <laughs> they keep CP in shape. Oh, see, you know, that's... The... You know, I need CP to come down here and deal with the crazy ones then. <laughs> <laughs> she's in better shape than me she can run faster <laughs> night buddy later there dlk hey thanks for stopping by cheers good evening bert how are you doing is that fencer still working is still keeping the ladies out of your uh your room there <laughs> later zo take it easy we'll chat later it'll be warmer tomorrow so cheers to that <laughs> Oh yeah, when <laughs> pasture. Okay, so we have we have those ten late calvers, and those late calvers are they they get wild out on pasture. Doing good, buddy. Hey, cheers, Shane. <laughs> Holy, I'm gonna need another beer right away. That's fantastic. Oh, Lactabani, that's beautiful country out there. I like snowmobiling up there. I didn't have a chance this year, but <clears throat> my Yamahas um, aren't treating me well lately. I think I might go back to a two-stroke so I can do some more snowmobiling. I know that sounds crazy, but my four-strokes didn't tre treat me well. Oh, oh that's the – you know what, Bert? That's the problem because it's a solar-powered. You're going to have to shut the lights off and let that battery die because those ladies are going to be – yeah. They're not going to break into your room and tell that the battery's dead. <laughs> Bird, how did you find that the T-shirt? Uh, was it pretty good, uh, decent quality? Did you find? <clears throat> BP, that's right. Calving pins, yeah. You know... <laughs> A couple people on Facebook were telling me, like, and I get it. They're right. Why don't I have a maternity pen, especially for I'm not out pasture calving, so it would make sense. It would. But I need either a portable unit or I need, I literally, I would need two, two separate setups. But all in all, when I build a barn, yes, I will talk to you about putting up some maternity pens, and I will definitely get one of those shoots with a drop so you can milk out the mother or with a crazy mom, you can safely do it. Because if you join late, 
dad and I lassoed that crazy cow and we milked her. And I'm telling you, it was a nightmare. Uh, she's put the, the fear into me, <laughs> that cow. It's crazy. I, I just, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow because I have to deal with her again. Just scary. You're, you're so Manitoba bee farmer. Absolutely. I, I got to talk to, uh, talk to dad about it. Cause that's his girl. But it, like I told my wife, she can't go into that area. My kids can't go with me. Um, it's just not, not in the direct calving area they're, they shouldn't be in there anyways. Cause those moms get protective, but we have a quieter crew in there. You can walk amongst them or you can play in the feeder or whatever it may be. Perfect. Right on, Bert. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. <clears throat> Everyone's asleep? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we did a good job playing them. Well, you can go go check the crazy cows because I'm thirsty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she thought I was joking. She's not going to go. I'm going to end up checking them. <laughs> BP, did you get uh, any more subs? Hey, Bert, go down to BCP Farming and Trucking. Give him a sub. Maybe you'll win a sweater there. Bunny hug. A bunny hug. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the roping, it's, 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 it gets silly. It gets silly after a while. Oh, yeah, well, Holsteins, <laughs> good thing they're, Holsteins are tame because they're big. <laughs> yeah, I guess when you get a crazy one, yeah, that's got to be, uh, that's got to be a nightmare a little bit. I was, uh, you know, I was talking, I touched base on small frame versus large frame cows. And um, I don't know, I think some of our cows are getting a little bit too big. Um, the calves, yeah, you know what? Generally, bigger cow, you know, a little bit easier calving, bigger calves, but man, they eat like crazy. They're eating so much. Ten of my girls, they're really big. They eat, what, probably 15, 18 of the medium frame girls eat. Later, buddy. Take her easy there, uh, Rocky Run Angus Ranch. Cheers. Later, BCP. I can get one more refreshment. Check the girls right away. Found that the bigger cow couldn't do what my medium cows could do. That's totally right. Like that's what I'm I'm finding that out. <clears throat> you know, I was talking to dad about the bigger versus the smaller. And uh he started with really big animals, and then we slowly worked down the red angus, but we still got some big girls and they're almost a little too big, you know, perfect. Two more, eh? Two more. Hey, cheers, Rodney. Thanks for popping by. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like uh, the Charlays. Yeah, the Charlays, eh? They're, well, you'd think the bigger, the more high maintenance, maybe. More input costs down the line. Hey, what are your guys' thoughts on, uh, one last thought here, antibiotics. 
if my calves, okay, so anything we butcher doesn't get antibiotics. Um, if we do, we pull them out because I sell antibiotic hormone-free animals. So the other day when I pulled that calf, I took a little bit of flack for not giving a shot of, of antibiotics, but there's no, re I didn't see any need to, uh, you know, we cleaned prior to going out. We didn't just go out there and, and pull her with dirty hands and, and uh, arms. So what, what, like, what are your, what are your thoughts on giving antibiotics? Like, I feel like it's a last resort, right? If the animal needs it, they got a fever. They're not, you know, they're going downhill. You got to give it, you got to, yeah. But, but I really don't believe in giving antibiotics off the hop unless they need it. Right. I think that'd be no different than medicating, you know, if you're a chicken farmer or a turkey farmer, just feeding tons of antibiotics, right. That might be a little bit different because they're in such close confined quarters, et cetera. But <laughs> cheers. Exactly, Albert. You know what? It's those small ones that are the most productive. One more sub there, BP. There you go, man. Right on. Hey, if anyone here hasn't subscribed to BCP Farming Trucking, go get that 500. Get one of those uh, those nice hoodies. Sorry, he's in Saskatchewan. Bunny hugs. Whatever the hell that is. <laughs> That's so weird. I've never heard that before this bunny hug i had to look it up i was like oh it's a hoodie <laughs> they're really nice though we're gonna have to do uh we're getting some clothing made we're actually getting hats and uh t-shirts hoodies made up prairie sunset ranch so i'm gonna be getting the, the samples of them soon so probably gonna do a giveaway or two of a nice uh, flex fit pro hat that's right do it now. Oh, I don't have it yet. Otherwise I would, I would for sure. I will, I'll do a live and I'll do a couple giveaways. I will give away like I'm ordering a, a few camo hats with Prairie Sunset Ranch YouTube and uh, with our logo. And uh, we're going to do a black one. We're going to do a camo one. I'm going to do a couple shirts, a couple hoodies. So yeah, no, we will definitely do that. I'll let everyone know ahead of time though. I won't just uh, throw it out right now. I don't have them right now. So I want to make sure they're good first. <laughs> Drug that doesn't do much. Yeah, eh? That's the, see, yeah, exactly. Valley View Acres, you're right. You know, you get resistance. You start pounding them full of antibiotics and you get too many. Yeah. You know what? This is one big thing. I have out. I always want to, um, I want to uh, touch base on uh, deworming. Deworming was another thing with antibiotics. For deworming, your cattle herd people won't believe this but as far as deworming goes we don't deworm our cattle herd we've never dewormed them ever can you believe that <laughs> that's that's the truth that's the honest to god truth um my dad um nobody ever has in my family and the animals we carry over, we never bring new cattle in. We only bring a bull in, right, every so often. So we're quite selective where we bring our bulls in from. But we don't do regular dewormings. With that said, some of you might say, like, with the calves, you might be missing out on gains. That's right. We do vaccinate. Yes, yes. We do the Tazvax, all that. Yes, absolutely. You have to vaccinate. And that's right. And we do antibiotic, you know, if we need an antibiotic, no, I'm not organic certified. I'm not going to withhold antibiotics. I think that's absolutely crazy. Um, we will give, if we need to give liquamycin or short acne penicillin, whatever it may be. Yes, we will. But we typically try not to, um, especially with our animals that we process. No, they don't get, if they, if, on the rare occasion we did have to give, we'd pull that animal out and we will not sell it. So.
Um, I was going to ask you. Yeah, so for dewormings, how often do you guys deworm your, your cattle? For you cattle guys out there. And I'm not judging. I'm not saying, hey, my animals are the best. They don't need deworming. No, that's not the case. I, I, I don't I don't disagree with deworming animals uh, <laughs> at all. But once you start, you got to do it, right? You got to continue on. Our sheep, they run a couple pastures. They will run a couple pastures before my cattle. But I always give that pasture, the small pasture, at least a month and a half, two months break in the summer. It's usually dry. A break before I run the cattle in there for the final fall run. So our sheep do need deworming. If we don't deworm the sheep, they will die. The sheep need it. So <laughs> you can't you can't withhold that from them. Uh, it would not work out well. Anyways, if we're getting up there in time here, I'm gonna have to go out and check my girls out. I think I got a lot of checks to do here. Gotta go check on the calves and everything. Just want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in today. Uh, shooting uh, the shit here. That was awesome. Thank you so much for everyone uh, chatting with me. Really good chatting with everyone. This is great because I get to chat with you one-on-one -on -one opposed to just the comments, you know. That's pretty cool. I'm liking this. But uh, anyways, cheers, everyone. They don't rub their hair off. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's reasonable. Like, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, deworming at that time makes sense, right? Hey, congrats, Drayton. Good job. What, uh, was it a big calf? Was it, uh, what kind of, emer was it an emergency or just too big to get out? Was it a first-time calver? Hey, night, Dan. That's pretty awesome. Whenever you was it was a calf or is the calf alive? I should say, uh, Drayton. <laughs> first time, of course, right? <laughs> Those first time calvers. Oh, I'm telling you, <laughs> calf as well. Fantastic, fantastic. How's mom? How's the mother calf doing? How's the heifer doing? Was it, uh, like, did you have to, uh, was it just a hard push or was it like a, a foot pin back or I was going to say, was it <laughs> rear presentation? Probably not though. That never turns out well. Usually not. I wanted to do a, when the weather's nicer, I got Wi-Fi that I'm going to set up so I can take uh, take you guys and gals out uh, with me to do the checks and everything once the weather's warmer, but it's too cold today. I was going to do it today, but it's just too damn cold. Drinking water, eating hay. Good job. Good job. That's awesome. What what breed of cattle is it? Is it a big uh, big breed like a limousine, Charlet, or Seminole, or what? <laughs> That's exactly right, Valley View. Exactly, first time calvers. I'm telling you, <clears throat> my first time calvers this year are huge. The animals compared to last year, last year's replacement cattle, they were amazingly. Red Ang they're red Angus, symbol influence. There's red, some whites. We had a black and white. We had a couple of blacks with white, but whatever. They're all similar. But they were easily 200 pounds less a piece than our this year's replacement heifers. I don't know why. Maybe we picked replacements more based on the mother's uh, frames. <laughs> I don't know why they're so much bigger. My the only thing that comes to mind, the calves are bigger, the calves are bigger, the replacements are bigger, is the feed. The feed is the feed is uh better. Um 
I don't know why our replacements are so much bigger this year. It's really weird. They're a big crew. I'm telling you, out of our, I think we have 16, 16 heifers there, first timers. Honestly, they're they're on par for being 1,600 pound cows. And I don't know how good that is. You know, like the productivity of a big cow like that down the line, unless they give you a hell of a good calf, I don't know. Like for us, if we're selling meat direct, it makes sense to have a bigger calf. But we still do sell at the auction, you know. So I don't know. At the end of the day, when we have feed, I guess it doesn't hurt. We have carry over this year, but this year is looking really dry. So I don't know. We might be going into another drought here. I I, I hope I'm wrong. But we picked up two more quarters last year that we got a hay, and I'm glad I bought it. I bought those two quarters because it was such a bad drought. We could get it, and I knew I could cut it. They're big fields, big hay fields. And basically, these these two fields, I got a lot ly- relying on them because they got to produce some hay <laughs> because the other fields are – I don't care how much you fertilize with without rains in the spring, you're not going to have the hay. And uh, this year there's not much snow right now. Um, I went to, you know, if you drive out to buy Carmen or out there, Winkler, Manitoba, there's no snow. There's no snow there. The crops, there's it's like dust storms right now. You could go work the field. It looks like it's crazy. So I hope we get some decent uh, spring rains because haying is going to be tough. You know, I was thinking about upgrading my disc mower, but I also wanted to upgrade the tractor. I want to upgrade a lot of things. There's a lot of upgrades that got to take place at this farm. I have a buddy that's selling a self-propelled new, uh, no, not New Holland, a self-propelled case, case IH. Uh, what did he call it? A wind rower. It's not a swather. It's a disc mower. I think it's 16, 17 foot head on it. It is going to be bad, Valley View. Honestly, I'm not selling any more hay this year. I, I'm not selling another bale. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Ryan, are you uh, the Ryan I'm thinking of? The uh, from high school? <laughs> I haven't seen your name pop up too much, but I recognize the name for some reason. Exactly, Albert. It, it's uh, feast or famine out here. It's crazy. Hey, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> it's been a while. Thanks for popping by. <laughs> crazy. I haven't talked to you for years. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, you know what? I think there might be a, I think this is going to be a drought situation again. And that's not good. Like we got carryover. I think we should have 500 bales to carry over. So that's, that's going to be pretty, pretty slick. Like I was going to sell some more, but I held on to it and I'm glad I did because they're not predicting a very wet spring. And with the snow, like it looked like we had lots that was drifted up, but it takes a lot of snow to once it liquefies, <laughs> once it melts, it's our water table so low that we're actually talking where our big tire water is our big, I don't know how many gallons that is. It's huge. It's got to be <laughs> that big. You guys have all seen it. Big with tire water. Anyways, dad was talking about he he's hopes we don't have to go down drill another well because there was issues with it actually getting a little bit dry uh, just from the lack of rains we've been having over the last, this would be the third year. So <laughs> sucks. Now, even if I'm selling hay, it's whatever, you know, it's, it's just not good. I, I don't like, cause if, if I'm selling hay, you know, all around me, all my friends, my neighbors are going to be hurting too. So it just sucks. Um, so I, I've been actually trying to feed up smart this year and save because last year I'm not the only guy, but I'm telling you, it was the coming down to the last, the check I wrote for my last load of hay. It was hard to write because <laughs> it was at the end of the year. So, so, yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. By the time the snow melts, it's it just runs off, right? <laughs> oh, 
I lost my web browser. Where did the live stream go, hun? Oh, here it is. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I had a bunch of messages come in and it popped off. Sorry about that, folks. Hey, later there, Drayton. Take it easy, buddy. Have a good rest of the calving as well. Living in uh, Alberta, eh? Living the dream in Alberta. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, Ryan. Great talking to you. Thank you. Well, folks, should I have one more, one more refreshment? Call her night. Nine twenty. I should probably head out and do my checks. All right, folks. Well, hey, thank you so much for. Uh, hanging out with me here for the last hour. Appreciate it. And uh, hey, yeah, you think so? One more for good measure? <laughs> One more. Why not? Oh. Last one, then I'm done. Then it's time for me to go do chores again. <laughs> hey, MJ, how's it going? We we're just talking about um, the lack of rain and everything out here. How Wherever you guys are, I know Valley View Acres, what it's like out there, but... Uh, how is it out where you are? Is it pretty dry? You guys are, are is anyone expecting a really dry spring and summer? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, I'm very nervous about this coming year. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of precipitation and there's definitely not going to be any water in the ground. We have an artesian spring uh, about a mile from the house and it usually pounds water out like 20 feet and there's one notch and there's a second notch and this big pipe. And this year it has to, we had to plug the one uh, the one hole just to get the water going out. The water table's so low, and that's like a, a artesian spring. It runs 24-7. So I don't know. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, if if you're in farming, you keep track of the weather, but yeah, if you didn't, it went <laughs> you wouldn't be as concerned about it. But for the hay guys. I don't know, for cattle guys, even with livestock, um, <clears throat> like I was saying, I feel bad for anyone that has to buy hay. Hey, if, if, uh, hey, Ryan Reed, if you're still on here, go down to BCP Farming and Trucking. He needs one more sub to hit 500. And then I think he's doing a giveaway for a hoodie. Go check him out. Uh, he's got a good farming channel, hotshot channel. Go check him out. Go check out uh, Ryan there at Straight Pipe Acres. He's got a hell of a good channel, too. Good dude. Good dudes. A lot of fun. Yeah, eh? Alberta, so same. It's crazy, eh? It's just a widespread ban all the way from Alberta to Manitoba. It's, I don't know, it's scary to think about, actually. I don't know what's going on with the weather. It's being drier and drier and drier every year. When I got back to the farm, when I came back to the ranch, it was raining and it was flooded. Exact opposite of the last three years here. But it was flooded. It gets wet here. We're low. Like we're in the Interlake region. We're in a low part of the Interlake region. So it gets damp. It gets wet. We have a uh, wildlife management a few miles from our house where they actually have... Um, uh, water level controls that they open and they, they close so they can raise the water or lower it and it does impact our lower land because they can flood us out on those years so it's moisture is always a battle out here whether it's it, whether it's excessive or not 
none at all. It seems like there's no, I don't remember a year where it's like, wow, this is a perfect year of rain and precipitation. It's just, I don't know. I haven't seen it for a while. <laughs> Holy, thank you, Ruth. I can't believe you're still here. That's awesome. Wow. Really appreciate it. I always like talking to you on all my videos. It's awesome. I, I love talking to all you folks on the on the videos. That's why I do it. <laughs> oh, Tyndall, Manitoba, eh? Really? Very cool. Hey, you can go pick up my... Uh, my skid frame for my Yamaha Nitro. One of my Yamaha Nitros I dropped off out, out that way, out at uh, Bowman Enterprises to rebuild my shocks. I got to go pick it up yet. That was a month ago. <laughs> so I took it out when it was plus five, and it was minus like 50 for a week or two, and I never picked it up. <laughs> I got to go back. I got to go there and pick it up. <clears throat> Crazy, eh? History repeats itself. It's It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. <laughs> so Alberta, eh? So yeah, it's spotty because I know Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan was hit with some really dry weather too. And then apparently, because my sister just moved back from Alberta back to Manitoba and it was wet there. The guys couldn't get on the fields in parts of Alberta. So it's just patchy. It, it's crazy. I can't believe how... You know what hit us five miles away never hit them uh, for precipitation so for us last year we got lucky we got one two key rains that that gave us a little bit of hay but it was no bumper crop that's for sure like the equipment took a beating it was hard ground it felt like you're driving on cement <laughs> hey cheers albert thanks for popping by you go check those cows i'm gonna be hitting i won't be far behind you i'll be a few minutes behind you because i gotta head out too later in a few minutes Really awesome hanging out with all you folks tonight. This is great. Well, this is only a second live stream. I did one that um, last night just to test it out for 30 minutes. And I did it off my phone. So this is the first one on my laptop that I bought, my newer laptop. So I'm glad it worked out. Uh, it's pretty fun. But what I wanted to say is I want to get a Wi-Fi extender. I want to take you guys out. And we'll do our checks. I'll show you guys what I do at night, every night. <laughs> <laughs> just before dark so that we'll make sure there's still some light and uh got to do the calf checks because these calves that we let out front some of them are very young but we got to boot them out uh after a few days because like today uh today we had so many calves at once and it like wasn't the fact we had five six calves we had we had six calves confirmed today there's probably another one by now so, like, we probably had seven calves today, which some guys, if you have 300 head of cattle, you're like, well, whatever. But we have 100 head of cattle. That's that's a lot in a day. We weren't planning for that. So our bulls were given her at the same time, and it keeps us busy. With the cold today, we had one inside here, hair drying. Thank God April was home. She helped me out. We were hair drying it, got his core temperature back up. We gave it some colostrum. We got him out there and we got him sucking. So I'll show you that in the next the video. I have lots of actually footage from today. Um, my GoPro, I went to two batteries, two and a half batteries. So I have lots of good footage. But uh, oh, I'm telling you, it was a heck of a day. Uh, it's good talking with you folks, having a beer, because I need to relax a little bit. <laughs> it was a rough day. Talk to you later there, uh, Torin. Take it easy. I'm going to be doing the same. Lots of cattle guys on here. That's awesome. Cattle are the way to go. Uh-oh. What are you watching, BP? Is it X-rated? <laughs> it's. Is it for my eyes or no? <laughs> Okay, the suspense is killing me. You got to tell me, what are you watching? What are you watching right now there, BCP Farming Trucking? <laughs> oh, no. 
really? <laughs> I'm not laughing. That's not funny. I, is it a is it a cow or is it a heifer? Hopefully it's a cow. I hope it's not a first timer, because you don't have much room to play with with a with a first timer. Black heifer. Oh, it's a heifer. Oh, that's BP. That sucks, man. How long? How long? When did she go in labor? Did you see the foot? Uh, has it been present for a while? Is there the uh, the water? The first bag balloon out. Thanks, Valley View Acres. I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you so much. Cheers. Yeah, no, this, the, you know what? I set out to do this channel, not to, we don't have anything fancy. We just, we have what we need to survive out here. <laughs> and we make do with it. Nothing fancy at all. And it's about saving money and, and you know, making a living, right? So it works out good. But I'll tell you what, I would never go back to my other job. I don't care if I was getting a paycheck every 14 days Never go back to that. Um, my only regret is not getting into this sooner. I wish I was back on the cow ranch earlier. I was born and raised here. I know what it's about. Like, it's in my blood. But I wish I was here earlier because we'd probably be a little bit um, more advanced as to where we are now. You know, it might have a new calving facility and this and that by now. But that's okay. We'll get there. Water bag is broken. The foot was out when I came to check. Uh oh. Damn, I hope it's I hope it's a front. Does it look like a front hoof? Or does it look like a back hoof? I hope it's not a back hoof, buddy. I really pray for you it's not. Oh, I feel your pain right now. I feel uh anxious for you. I hope it's um uh, that one hoof, it, our video, we got lucky. It's it, it. It doesn't always turn out that way. <laughs> For a single hoof presentation, they can be with the first time heifer, depending how constricted, how tight they are. They have no elasticity. Like they're ugh. good job, Brian. You you'll you'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did, buddy. Good channel. Lots of good guys on here. Front feet are both there and the head. Okay, so it's a front. You got this, and I got faith in you, buddy. You'll get it out. You'll pull her out. If you can, keep us posted. I, I, I want to stay on here now. <laughs> I want to see if you get that calf out. <laughs> I'm going to imagine if you see both front feet and you see the heads there. She might push her out, push it out to self unless it looks like it's got Frank. And does it look like it has big oversized hoofs? Or is it like a average size? Hooves can tell a lot of they're those joints on the hooves. Man, sometimes when you see that big hoof and you're like, it's not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do claws down. <laughs> oh, I hope BP BP didn't lose his cell phone inside the heifer. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take it easy. Good luck. Hey, send, fire me off a, a message later, okay? Let me know how it goes. Cheers. Good luck. Well, folks, just about done. Just about done my beer when I'm done this. I got to go check out my herd, and hopefully I don't have a heifer doing anything crazy like that because I don't feel like pulling today. Holy, Andy, are you still on here? <laughs> no way. You must have just checked in again. <laughs> There's no way you would be that quiet there. Did YouTube put you in YouTube jail again? 
Oh, that's funny. Good laughs, my man. Hey, I had another American brother and sister of mine that wants some beef. Been in and out of consciousness. <laughs> I was talking to another uh, American couple that they said they'd buy my beef. So I really got to look into this. If I wouldn't you shit if you woke up and there's a big ribeye or a tomahawk steak with your name on it from Prairie Sunset Ranch? <laughs> You'd like that, eh? I might, you know what? I'd even throw in a t-shirt for you because, you know, I'm going to be applying for that uh, assistant to the supervisor position. But I know your supervisor does a good job, but uh, but for the right price, you know, I'd consider signing on the paperwork. <laughs> Probably has a nicer bed than me, though. Oh, okay, double extra large. Okay, all right. I can send you one of my used ones. <laughs> Lightly used. <laughs> minimal, minimal afterbirth on them. I won't send you the one I pulled the calf with. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyways, all right, folks, I'm done this. I was going to say 9.30. Got to go check the girls, so it's been a slice. Thank you kindly. Cheers, everyone. I'll uh, I'll do a uh, another live stream. I'll be doing my video this Friday at uh, probably Friday morning. I'll do it on Friday morning, uh, probably around 10, 10 or 11. It's going to be a good one. It's a little bit rough. I'm not in a good mood, but that's okay. You guys got me in a good mood. Only took a couple beers and some chatting. Yeah, everyone. Hey, if you're uh, if you're on here, go down to the Grumpy Farmer too. Go check out. He's got a live stream going on uh, on Thursday night with Jimmy. They're a riot. Uh, they're some funny dudes. Uh, I like listening to those too. So go check them out. The Grumpy Farmer. Good guy. Chat with that guy every day. Love it. So. Anyways, we'll leave you with that. Cheers, everyone. Have a great night. And uh, cheers from Prairie Sunset Ranch. Bye for now. <laughs>